we have completed a uh, uh, user administration and group administration now we will discuss a topic uh, partitioning in red hat linux it is one of the very important topic okay mm, we'll see one by one what about srikan sir uh, okay he may join in the middle Okay, I think you know what is partitioning, uh, you know, this concept in Windows, but uh, how it will be in Linux, we'll see. How to manage partitions and file systems, how to apply file systems on the partitions, uh, what is a file system, how to mount a particular directory to that partition, we'll see one by one. First of all, partitioning means... Uh, it is a way of dividing a single hard drive into many logical drives that means uh, in, your, in your computer if you see in windows uh, you are having only one hard drive but you will partition partition means dividing so in simple uh, dividing that uh, entire hard disk into you will divide that into c d e f like that Dif uh, hard uh, hard drives okay simple simple thing you need to you will divide that single hard disk into many logical drives so you are dividing that logically not uh, physically okay it is physically it is a single hard drive we'll divide that into different logical drives like c drive d drive e drive f drive okay that concept is nothing but partitioning you will observe that in windows okay so partitioning is way of doing the partitions what is meant by a partition? A partition is nothing but it is a continuous set of blocks on a drive that are treated as a as an independent disk, independent disk, which means it is continuous cont continuous set of blocks means co continuous set of blocks on the drive, and uh, that uh, the, all those blocks are considered as an independent disk. Of course, it is logically only. Okay, we are having a single hard drive. Again, that single hard drive is divided into some contiguous set of blocks c d e f so every disk is treated as an independent disk logically okay so next one is uh, one of the another term you need to know is partition table it is an index that relates sections of the hard drive to partition it is just like an index uh, index that shows uh, how many partitions are there uh, from which location to which location the partition exists uh, how much space it is occupying like that okay so everything was uh, given in that partition table okay next why we need to go for this uh, multiple partitions on a single hard drive, hard drive you can keep a single hard drive like that only one drive but why we need to partition okay because uh, because of these three reasons okay uh, we can en encapsulate your data we can increase the disk space efficiency we can limit data growth okay uh, because of all these three reasons uh, we need to go for partitions suppose uh, let us think uh, if if you are having only one partition suppose uh, on the hard drive we are having only one partition suppose uh, that means uh, your operating system is on uh, on that uh, same drive your other files are uh, resides on the same same file suppose if if there is some fault fault means uh, if some virus or some uh, some portion of that hard disk is uh, damaged okay uh, some uh, are your your some of your files are corrupted so entire your partition will get uh, affected so you lost your data okay that is uh, that is one of the reason okay why why we are going for multiple partitions if you're having multiple partition that is uh, in c drive you are having uh, this operating system and other softwares in d drive you are having some data in f drive you are having some data if d drive is affected uh, no problem with uh, c if, d, if the files in d drive is uh, corrupted or affected so nothing to do with uh, c c uh, will be the data will be saved in the same same way we can increase the disk efficiency also 
uh, that means we are partitioning into smaller smaller uh, groups so smaller smaller blocks so automatically it will efficiency if, if it will increase that disk space efficiency if you have only one one partition so that one partition and entirely use that as single hard drive so so if you break that into three three uh, two or three uh, partitions that will uh, save the disk space so that it will improve the descriptions in the same way it will limit the data growth that means uh, data growth means suppose uh, if you see in on uh, networking just if you are having uh, multiple number of users are there okay uh, if one user consumes more data other users consume less data uh, if you don't uh, partition that uh, hard drive into partition different partition if you give the entire uh, uh, partition to a particular uh, group of people so what they will do if, if some user uses that partition more uh, if he produces more data on that disk so other uses less data so uh, entire partition will be occupied by that user only other users may suffer okay if you allot a particular partition to a particular user only suppose if if you are having 20 gb uh, 20 gb space if you allot 1 gb 1 gb to every 20 users uh, so everyone you will use 1 gb 1 gb like that if you don't uh, partition that in that way uh, so one user uses uh, 15 gb other uh, 19 users may need to use 5 gb okay so if you partition uh, partition if you go for partitioning then it will limit the data growth so we can limit the maniac users so those who use um, more data we can limit them of course if you need more data he will risk, uh, request for uh, uh, one more partition one more amount point we will we will alert them okay so general structure of uh, partitioning in linux is uh, okay you will see this uh, structure i will tell you what what was that okay on the disk where os is installed we'll have an uh, uh, we'll have the first partition as ambia so generally in linux uh, we'll partition in the red hat linux 6 we'll partition a hard hard drive like this so we're having three primary partitions and uh, one extended partition okay we'll see uh, what is extended partition what is primary partition okay in that primary partition mbr mbr is nothing but master boot record it 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 was there in first partition only okay i, I will show you when lab starts okay mbr is nothing but this is just a bootloader program so this bootloader uh, master boot record will reside in the first partition okay uh, and uh, the remaining two pa primary partition and one extended partition in the text and partition we will do logical partitions okay i'll tell what is one by one so mbr is a master boot record which contains important utilities regarding that uh, booting booting process okay while booting process i will explain what is an mbr what is mbr what that mbr okay uh, totally uh, this uh, uh, totally it consists of 512 bytes of data so out of that uh, around 446 occupied by mbr remain 64 occupied by this ipl and uh, two bytes are occupied by this pta okay so if you go with uh, the mbr in the post partition mbr ipl pta will be there totally this combines uh, 512 mb data voice cut out the wait I think network is good. Now it is okay. Now, now voice is good now. Okay. Uh, there may be some signal dropping issue. Okay. Mm, okay.
so this hyperl is responsible for booting the operating system because it contains the bootloader bootloader is a program just uh, it is a program uh, in red hat linux uh, version 4 it is called lilo linux loader that bootloader program is known as lilo and in 5 onwards it is called grub in uh, 5 and 6 it is called grub in 7 it is called grub2 okay you can google it for that okay i will t tell you what is grub uh, while booting process what is mbr what is grub i will tell you everything okay so it is a partitioning concept i am not going deep into these uh, topics mbr and uh, okay you will see that all that all that uh, in a uh, booting process okay next pti is nothing but partitional table information is the information about the number of partitions on the disk size of that partition and types of partition that means entire information about that partition was kept in this pti partition table information okay uh, there is a structure of uh, uh, okay and one more thing is uh, if you see here uh, in red hat linux uh, six uh, we're having three primary partition and one extended partition totally it is uh, it must have only four partitions okay uh, why four partition uh, do that uh, work today and uh, tomorrow uh, tell me okay you find that reason okay, okay. next that means we are having three primary partitions it only allows three primary partition one extended partition again in that one extended partition we will do logical partitions why this uh, so in in red hat linux 6 below red hat linux 6 only so if you do primary partition it is a standard partition it doesn't allow again uh, partitioning these partitions but if you if you use extended partition we can again uh, make a logical uh, partition into that extended partitions okay so totally it allows four only that's why we will do three primary partition and and one extended partition in that one extended partition we will again divide that into different logical partitions okay but if you do primary partition we cannot again that divide that into logical partitions so in general we uh, we can do three primary partition one extended partition of course it's our choice we can do only one primary partition one extended partition like that we can do but in general it will be low at a maximum of three primary partition one extended partition so this extended partition in the text partition we can again make different logical partitions you will understand clearly that when we go through it okay so there are three types of partitions of course primary and extended only two but in that extended we can divide that into logical partitions okay next uh, in the terminology disk identification how the disk was identified in linux is if it is an id drive integrated uh, disk uh, electronics drive it is uh, represented like this slash dev hda okay if it is sc scsi it will call as scsi scsi small computer system interface scsi or iscsi okay please remember this one scsi SCSI drive it will be shown as slash dev sta convention it is, an, it is a nomenclature or terminology used in red hat linux 6 or, or in linux gen, in general okay if it is a virtual drive it will be shown as slash dev vda okay please remember in our case uh, at the time of installation we have taken these options kazi so it will show slash dev sta okay now how to do this partitioning in rhl6 before going to do partitioning uh, we need to know how many partitions are presently existing in that uh, hard drive so by using this command f disk hyphen l or parted hyphen l we'll came to know uh, how many partitions are there okay enter information about that partition f disk hyphen l which is a very important command okay so if you want to see only one hard disk okay uh, that is f disk hyphen that hard disk name slash sd uh, slash dev sta if you want to know about second hard disk it is slash dev stb if it is uh, third hard disk it will be like slash dev stc like that the na name con naming convention will be 
like that if you are having, having only one hard disk then it is slash dev sta so it is if you are having two more disk uh, first one is S, uh, slash dev sta second one is slash dev stb you will understand while doing lab everything next how to create a partition to know uh, the existing partitions we need to use this command f disk hyphen l uh, it will list all the partition all the hard disk partitions uh, okay if you want to, to see only one particular uh, hard disk you need to use f disk uh, that uh, part is, uh, hard disk name okay if you want to create a new partition if you want to see an existing partition you, you need to use this if you want to create a new partition then again you need to use this command f disk hyphen f disk space slash dev sta if you uh, then a menu will open if you want to see entire information if you use some p and all those comments i i will tell you right now if you want to create new partition then you will you need to use n okay after that you will get some options you need to uh, choose the option based on your requirement like that okay uh, if you want to list out all the partition information you need to use p if you want to see uh, help information you need to use m after doing that partition you need to save that one so then you need to use w command i will show you enter then if you want to delete a particular partition you need to use that command d when you entering that uh, editor okay so to save that one you need to use w after that you need to hit q okay just like it is just like vi but not vi okay exactly it is not vi okay next after after creating a new partition you need to update that partition in the partition table you, you you know pti okay in that partition you need to enter that partition but uh, to enter the partition you need to reboot it without restarting that partition table you can do that using this command part pro or part x okay so part pro is uh, used in old uh, rhl5 versions uh, better use part x command part x hyphen a and that uh, partition name then it will update okay next uh, so first we need to create a hard disk sorry sorry we need to create a partition after creating a new partition we need to update the information of that partition in the partition table by using part x command after that uh, a partition will be created in that hard disk after that we need to format that partition with the file system why why we need to partition that with a file system first of all before knowing to that we must know what is a file system a file system is nothing but it is a method of storing data in an organized fashion on the disk okay every partition on the disk except mbr and extra partition should be assigned with some file system in order to make them store the data in an organized manner that means uh, uh, suppose uh, for example if you see a library or bookkeeping system if you throw books uh, randomly uh, uh, somewhere uh, that is in zigzag manner if you if you uh, the if in the same way if you store the data on a partition uh, without uh, applying an a file system okay uh, so uh, that will be not an efficient way so if you use a method nothing but file system it will store the data in an organized manner that means uh, uh, if you see a library all the books are uh, kept in uh, in an organized manner for a particular uh, uh, department uh, everything will be kept in a rack suppose if, if the books are related to technical uh, that is under technical section if they are in uh, if they are under some literature they, they are kept in, uh, kept in some literature like that and uh, entire information was uh, was kept in some book written everything was written in a book we can find where where all those are uh, kept that means that is in a systematic way all the books are uh, kept in a systematic way okay in the same way the data was stored in a hard disk in an organized fashion if you apply file system on that on that hard disk okay so that is the importance of file system not only in linux it will be this concept is applicable on windows all all other operating systems okay so file system is applied on the partition by formatting it, it with a particular type of file system again file system there are different file systems are there if you go with windows ntps uh, uh, we fat like like uh, different file systems are there fat uh, okay uh, in the same way in linux also there are different file systems are there uh, ext2 ext3 
okay xfs uh, vfat uh, like the different uh, file systems are, are there in rhl so we need to go with a different uh, particular based on our requirement we'll do that with uh, particular uh, file system we will apply that particular file system on that partition okay so ext uh, in rhl6 ext4 file system is popular in red hat ext file system is ext ext2 ext3 ext4 are popular in rhl6 we will go with ext4 okay i will i will tell you what are the difference between ext1 and ext2 in rhl7 it is xfs file system okay so the ext extender file system is uh, ext means extender file system it is widely used file system in linux uh, vfat is a file system uh, to uh, manage between linux and windows okay of course there are a lot of uh, file systems are there uh, we'll see when course moves on progress okay these are the difference between ext2 ext Three and ext4. Okay. Sorry. So first, if you see, uh, ext2 means second uh, type of. First one is ext, ext, ext2, ext3, ext4. So uh, it was introduced in 1993. This file system was introduced in. 1993 ext2 file system okay next ext3 ext3 and ext4 sorry okay uh, ext3 is third file uh, extended file system ext4 is the fourth extended file system it was introduced in 2001 it was introduced in 2008 just uh, these are uh, updated versions of uh, one by one 93 it was ext2 2001 it is ext3 2008 ext4 uh, in up to rhl6 it also uh, in rhl7 it is the xfs system of course it supports uh, ext4 ext system also okay and uh, in ext4 ext2 it doesn't have journaling future okay journaling future and ext3 journaling feature is there ext4 is journaling feature okay uh, do some homework for this journaling system if you don't find anything i will tell you tomorrow next class okay in here the file size can be 16 gb2 it supports the file size up to six from 16 gb to 2 tb in ex if you apply ext2 on a particular partition uh, the file size maximum is 2, 2 tb minimum is 16 gb to 2 gb okay it will support and uh, in ext3 it is 16 db to 2b it is of the same compared to this one in ext4 the file size maximum file size is from 16 gb to 16 tb okay in this way it is different from these two and in the same way maximum ext2 file system size here it is file size here file system size both are different file is an individual file file system is entire uh, uh, file system type Okay, this entire file system size it can support from entire that means it is uh, collectively collectively all files on that uh, ext on that particular mode point okay so i will tell you what is mode point mode point is nothing but a, a simple directory okay uh, that one it will it will support a maximum file system size is 2 terabytes to 32 terabytes okay uh, ext3 system it supports 2 terabyte to 32 you need to remember these uh, six things okay and uh, ext4 it will support up to ext4 file system size it will suppose maximum up to 1 exabyte 1 exabyte is nothing but 1024 petabyte 1 petabyte is 1024 terabyte i, th I think you know terabyte okay so 1024 terabytes equal to 1 petabyte 1024 petabytes equal to one exabyte so ext4 will support a maximum file system size of one exabyte so that's why it is a updated one okay that is one of the difference uh, so we cannot convert ext file system to ext2 before ext2 there is ext extended uh, initial uh, extended file system name is ext we cannot convert that ext system to ext2 there is no uh, no supporting feature in that ext2 but in in ext3 we can convert an ext2 file into ext3 because it was updated version 
So if we are having an ext2 file, we can convert that into ext3. Whereas if we have an ext file, we cannot convert that into ext2. So this will be done without backup and restore. Okay. Next, all previous ext system, ext files that is ext, ext2, ext3 easily converted into ext4. You can also mount an existing ext3 file system as ext4. Okay. That means already if you are having some ext3 system, it was mounted. That means mounting is nothing but attaching a directory to the particular system, particular file system. If it is previously mounted as ext3, we can make it ext4. We can make it, we can mount that like ext4 without having to upgrade it. Okay. So that is the advantage of ext4. Next. Next. Uh, so. Uh, after that uh, after doing a new partition we need to format a partition with a particular file system here in rh 6 we will partition that with vxt4 of course we can do that vxt3 but advanced is vxt4 that's why i am choosing vxt4 okay i think you you, you came to know you understood why why we need to format a partition with file system just now i told you so what is the reason if you apply a file system on a particular partition, so that will that will store the data in an organized way. Okay, that is the reason we need to apply file system. So that will keep that everything in an organized way. A file system can keep the data on a partition in an organized way. So for that we need to use a command mkfs dot file system size. Suppose if it is ext4, you need to use mkfs dot ext4. And that particular partition ELSDA SDA 7 means 7th partition on SDA disk. Okay, I will show you entire things. Okay, next after after formatting a partition with file system, next step you need to do is you need to mount. Okay, you need to mount that partition. So, first of all, what is mounting? Okay, mounting is nothing but it is very simple. Attaching a directory to the file system in order to access that partition and its file system. Okay, so simple. Uh, after creating a new partition, uh, we can save the da data, of course, but it is in raw format. So we need to organize the data. We need to apply a file system on that uh, partition. After applying that file system, if you want to access the data, you must attach a directory to that file system. Okay, that means you, if you want to accessing means uh, writing, writing, executing all these things. If you want to see the data, if you want to write something into data, you must mount that file system. So mounting is nothing but simple. Attaching a directory to that file system. Okay, directory means you know directory. You, you will create a new directory and you will attach that directory to that file system. So that we can access the data. If you don't attach, if you don't mount the file system, you cannot access the data. Okay, that is the reason. That is another another step. So the mount point is the directory. Simple mount point is nothing but it is a directory uh, in 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 the currently accessible file system to which additional file system is mounted. Okay. So examples are the MNT directory exists by default on Unix Linux. Okay. Uh, or if you want to create a new mount point, you need to create a directory and we will attach that new directory to that file system. Okay, by default, uh, slash mnt is the uh, directory which exists by default on, on all, all Linux and uh, Unix systems. Okay, where where CD ROMs, USB, all these uh, mount points are saved. Okay, mount points for media, media like CD ROM, all these their data was by default goes to this slash mnt. Okay, so for this uh, inform if you want to know about that information about that mountings uh, in red hat linux or in linux we'll have two files important files first one is slash etc mtap and second one is slash etc fsw this you must remember these two files very important files slash etc mtap is a file which stores the information of the currently mounted systems it is dynamic and keep changing whereas slash etc Ftab, fstab is the file which keeps the information about the permanent mount points i will show the difference between these two okay uh, if if you want to make your mount point permanent you must enter that mount point in this fstab okay so the difference main difference is currently mounting that means the uh, the permanent as well as temporary mount points will appear in this slash, slash etc mtab okay uh, 
uh, suppose if the system reboots the currently mounted temporary mount points will automatically miss and only permanent permanent uh, mount points will be appeared for the next boot that will be if you write if you enter that mount points in slash etc tab then they will become permanent if don't if you don't enter the mount point uh, new created mount point then that will be in m tab slash it is m tab but after reboot that will vanish if you enter that in fs tab after reboot again that will appear so an m tab consists of temporary mount points as well as permanently mount points so, so that's why it stores the information of all currently mounted file systems and it is dynamic and keeps changing whereas fs tab is a permanent it keeps the information about the permanent mount points if you want to make a mount point permanent you must enter the mount point in this directory okay i will show you how to do that one okay so mounting is a process of where we attach a directory to the file system two types of mountings are there temporary mounting permanent mounting okay so temporary mounting is mounting point we will create a directory and mount it but this mount point will last only till the next boot up boot up next uh, till the system is up if it is uh, reboot then that mount point will miss okay if it is rebooted the mount point we, we will lose that is called temporary uh, mounting okay you will understand by the name itself temporary mounting it is mounted temporarily only up to it will uh, persist up to system is up once it is rebooted it will vanish okay so the syntax to mount a mount point temporarily is mount and device name device name is nothing but that partition name slash uh, dev slash sda7 like that okay and that directory name nothing but mount point mount point is nothing but directory we will create some new directory or old existing directory so we need to give the name here so simple com simple command temporary mounting is nothing but mount device name and that means partition name and mount point name okay next so if you want to see the what are the mounted presently mounted portions you will use mount option if you type mount you will see all those now, one more option is there df hyphen h option is there uh, we will see the difference between these two okay so after the after uh, mounting a part, uh, the particular uh, mount point uh, we want to access the data you simply cd uh, that uh, mount point name you can enter into that uh, mount point and you can see the data you can write the data we can uh, read the data into that uh, directory files all those things okay if you want to unmount that uh, partition simple unmount that partition name again here no need to uh, give that uh, device name if you want to if you want to mount uh, temporarily you must uh, use this syntax mount space the device name and directory name if you want to unmount it simple unmount that uh, mount point name the directory name simple okay so after unmounting it check with the uh, mount command yeah, whether it is unmounted or not we'll see one by one okay that is temporary mounting next what is uh, permanent mounting permanent mounting is nothing but procedure to enter that uh, a temporary mount, mount point into slash it is a f step after entering it uh, slash it is f step after saving it the details it will become permanent mount point okay that process is known as permanent mounting simple i will show you how to enter that one okay next uh, how to do that permanent mount point so uh, first uh, create a directory okay add entry in uh, slash it is f step f step uh, there are six entries in uh, slash it is uh, six fields in slash it is f step i will show you Oh, oh, I will explain what are those six entries. After after doing slash it is f step execute mount hyphen a command to check uh, it is mounting or not. Of course you don't do that in real time. I'll tell you why why that later. Okay. So after just uh, do this enough. Okay. If if you use mount command, it will show what are the mount points. If you use mount hyphen a uh, it will update all the mount points names okay next in summary how to do partitioning is the process so that entire process is explained in four steps first we need to create a new partition by using f disk uh, command and uh, taking a particular options in that f disk command after that you need to update that partition table without restarting by using command partex 
hyphen a command after that we need to format that partition with file system because file system makes uh, or arranges the data in an organized manner that's why we need to apply a particular file system like ext2 ext3 ext4 or other uh, xfs like all those systems by using mkfs hyphen sorry mkfs dot uh, file system type and that uh, mount point type next after that you need to mount that partition why mounting is required is after applying file system we cannot access the data in that partition if you want to access the data you must mount that partition okay mounting is nothing but uh, simple attaching a particular directory to that particular partition so you need for that you need to create a new directory or you need you you can use the old existing also you must attach that uh, to uh, that partition so here mounting can be done in temporary way and permanent way temporary way is using simply by using mount command okay mount device name and mount point name sorry mount device name and mount point and the permanent way is giving entry in fs tab slash etc fs tab and saving it okay so if you want to see that mount point information you can use the mount command or you can use df hyphen h command okay so to unmount uh, you know already this one okay this totally about partitioning we'll see lab session we'll practice it one by one Okay. look here uh, that partitioning enter thing uh, can be done only as a root user only okay if you have some pseudo privileges then ordinary user can do it normal user can do it if, if he has pseudo privileges otherwise he can't do anything okay so to see what are the present existing uh, partitions in my uh, system is uh, look here so disk uh, only i am having only one hard disk that is slash dev sta so its size is 21.5 gb it is given in bytes and it was also given in true 55 heads 63 sectors for track and 62610 cylinders so in the next session you please uh, give what is a sector what is cylinders do the text size and tell me in the next class see what is a cylinder what is a sector of course here it is somewhat explained you must know what uh, everything okay next thing is uh, here it is just like partition table okay device first device name is boot it was in slash dev sda1 i told you boot is the one it was always been first first partition okay the hard disk name is sta slash dev sta and the first partition so one partition one so its name is boot okay it starts from first first cylinder okay and up to it will the ending one is 26 total number of blocks is this one and id is 83 in in the system linux okay Linux is type uh, ID is 83 it is swap type is 82 I will tell you what is this okay uh, next next second partition is sta2 okay this these boundaries are 26 to 2089 and total size is this one and uh, slash dev slash sta3 is 2089 2681 okay so these are the three mount points first one is boot second one is slash this one is belongs to slash of course it was not given here and third one is swap okay this one is swap okay when we have created these 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 three things at the time of installation we have done this but after installation if you want to uh, do a new partition or if you want to do something we will do by this process only okay 
so look here these are different uh, file system uh, in fs dev we'll see all the mount points slash dev shm slash dev pts slash dev sys slash dev strokes are all the these are default ones those are created by system okay look here these are at the time of installation first one is slash second one is slash boot third one is swap these are first one is boot of course here order is uh, different and uh, okay here it is in in this order but uh, in real time uh, but really that uh, first first sector of first uh, partition on boot takes the first partition of your hard disk okay so that's how we can see uh, the partitioning information in a linux fdisk l is the command now i want to uh, see uh, totally there are uh, how many bytes of data around 82 something okay blocks total blocks are uh, this one, something there is some pre spaces there okay we must know the that uh, pre space okay if you look here by using this df and command okay here also you can find those uh, partitions sda2 sda1 sda and swap is not uh, shown here okay so, so now I want to create some new partition. Of course, SDA was already uh, partitions was done. There is some only less uh, pre space. For that, I want to add one more hard disk in VMware. If it is in physical, you need to mount. Uh, you need to insert the that uh, hard disk into physically the system. After that, you need to use some command to see that uh, hard disk. After that, you you can partition. But in VMware, you can easily add uh, a hard disk into it simple if, if we, in vmware also we are doing it virtually but uh, physically there must be some space okay then only you can do that hard disk 20 gb okay suppose uh, i want to add a new hard disk here so hard disk add okay Wait. Okay, SCSI. I am using SCSI. It is advanced one. Okay. Create a new hard disk. New virtual disk. Uh, this time taking free because I am not having that much space in my hard disk. next Finish. so look here first hard disk and one more hard disk was added now okay now if you see whether it was uh, reflected in that or not okay it was not reflected so for that i need to restart okay in real time i will tell that uh, by change management they will do i will restart this one or you can use any type command okay i think session is going to complete i will log in once again wait for that Just I will exit and uh, start a new session. Wait for that. Meanwhile, it will reboot. Okay. 